Welcome to Cyber Church with me, Siobhan Smith, where we experience ministry beyond the matrix. I am so glad that you took time out of your busy schedule to join us on today. May this experience change your life forever. Tonight, I am excited to, to be on with, with you all. Um, but I got to be honest with y'all to, to, I, I've been, I have been struggling today. Um, and struggling with just feelings of, of discouragement. And so I've been just seeking the father all day. Um, you know, for those of you who are consistent, um, with cyber church, you all know how serious, um, cyber church is for me. And anytime I, I have to get on live and, um, share. It's a serious thing for me. And so I, um, take time just to spend in quiet time with the father, just to get clear directives and to, to hear what his heart is concerning us and what is it he wants to say. And just to make sure that I say it the way he wants me to say it in, in his spirit, you know? And so today I've been in that posture, just trying to see God for, for the word for tonight. And it's, it's been a struggle for me. It's been, it's been one of those days, a couple of, just the past couple of days have been pretty, um, eh, just kind of, just kind of dis discouraging. And the father finally, finally spoke to me, um, tonight and he's given me to share on discouragement and how, we overcome discouragement. You know, how, how do we respond to discouragement? I want you all to know that discouragement is not just for those who have, you know, done something wrong. And there's that, 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 that when you, you, that the discourage, you feeling discouraged doesn't mean that you've sinned. You, you feeling discouraged or going through a, a time where you're sad or going through a time where you just want to quit. It, it, it is not equated to, um, God's hand is removed off of your life. Um, there are going to be seasons in your life where the best of us become discouraged. And I want you to know that the spirit of discouragement loves to show up and grip us after many of our greatest victories. After many of our greatest victories, we have just came out of one of the most powerful um, moves of God in, in the lives of those of us that have consecrated. And I want you all to know that so many testimonies ha ha have, have came forth just in the 15 days of God performing miracles and bodies being healed and, and, and those who did not know Christ, them accepting Christ and financial breakthroughs and still, still, even though the consecration is over, testimonies are still coming in. People are still inboxing and saying that their lives have been forever changed because of the consecration. And I sat back and I said, you know, I know the enemy is waiting for a moment because he is not happy about what has happened. He, he is not happy about the lives that have been uh, uh, blessed and the hearts that have been won to the father. He's not happy. And so I was just sitting back, just waiting. Cause I said, I know he is going to come and by golly, he, he, he showed up and it's, it's, it's so easy to talk strong and to, and to talk faith when that spirit doesn't hit you. But when you are in it and when it grips your mind and when you, you, you experience it, that's when, um, you got to really press into God even more. And the father spoke to me and I said, you know, I, I am really discouraged. I'm trying to press through, you know, I'm trying to shake it off, you know, because I understand that I can't wallow in, in despair. And he says to me that the discouraged have to just become more desperate. 
The, the, the more the spirit of discouragement tries to grip you is the more desperate you come after me. You was girded up. You were strengthened. You was already prepared for the enemy during your consecration. Why? Because you stayed in the face of God all day for 15 days. Now that the consecration is over, you've kind of slacked up a little bit. And so the moment that you slack up, the moment that you begin to get comfortable, the moment that you go back to business as usual is when the enemy can come in and catch you. So you can't just, you know, stay in my face and be in my presence during consecration time. But this, I received the seed, bless you. But this has to be your life, Siobhan. This has to be your practice. This has to be your discipline, not just for 15 days, but the same way you pressed in for the father to hear him and to see him move. And the same way you pressed in. And you were very intentional about your time in the word and about your time in prayer and about your time in worship. You cannot let up none because the enemy is not going to let up. And so you, it's a little wind that's been taken out of you. Why? Because you have gotten comfortable. When this spirit comes, because you knew he was going to try to come, you already knew that he was a a a on the sideline just waiting for a moment. You should have already been prepared in prayer. You should have already been girded up knowing that we're not ignorant concerning the enemy's tactics. We're not ignorant concerning how he's going to come. So because you know he's coming, then your prayer should have gotten more intensified. Are you all hearing me? Because I need to help somebody tonight. Because the enemy ain't just after me. But he's after you too. Elijah had a great victory. He had just taken out the false prophets. Those that worship Baal. And, 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 and he had this great victory on Mount Carmel where he called on the fire of God to fall and to consume everything that was there, the sacrifice and to consume the altar. And the father showed up for Elijah. And the Bible says that because of what happened at Mount Carmel, that many people declared that Elijah's God was the only true and living God. Even those that did not want to give God acknowledgement, they could not deny that, you know what? It ain't our God that answered. It was your God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob that answered this prayer and that rained down fire. So God was made known in front of the doubters and God used Elijah to do it. And right after this major victory, here comes the enemy. And the enemy now wants to intimidate Elijah and wants to make him feel that God is not with him by doing what? Allowing him to hear negative words. Which is why it's so important to guard your ears and to guard your eyes. Because as soon as Elijah heard that because of the victory, because of what you've done, now here comes the enemy with retaliation. Now here comes the enemy with the spirit of backlash because you've done what? Because you have wreaked havoc in his territory. I want you all to understand something. The enemy does not like anybody that comes and shakes up what he's trying to have control in. He does not like anybody. That is a threat to him. And so the job of the enemy is to do what? Grip those of you. Grip those of us. 
who have made up in our minds that we're going with God, that we're going to live for God, that we've said goodbye to the world, that we ain't the person we used to be, that we're not going to respond the way we used to respond, that we're not going to behave the way we used to behave, that our faith is rooted and grounded. If I've never been so disciplined before, I'm disciplined now. The enemy is after you. Those of you that is made up in your mind that I am going with the father, no matter what you're the target and whatever the enemy can use to cause you to shut up, to cause you to back up, to cause you to stop, to cause you to retreat, to cause you to doubt, to cause you to wallow in pity. To cause you to get so discouraged that you can't fulfill your purpose. That's what he will do. Elijah becomes so discouraged. I told you that discouragement will grip the best of us. It ain't just for, but for the, for the person that, 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 that is, you know, that, that, that discouragement only comes to those that ain't doing nothing. The discouragement comes to any of us. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how, how many years you've been saved. I don't care how many degrees you have. I don't care what family lineage you come from. I don't care how good your marriage is. I don't care how good your children are. I don't care how many degrees you have. I don't care if you're a preacher. I don't care if you're a business owner. I don't care how much good that you do. The spirit of discouragement, if you are not careful, if I am not careful, it will come and try to take over. He hears a word from the enemy. He now experiences the spirit of backlash and retaliation because of what he did on Mount Carmel. And now he's discouraged and he does what? He runs and he hides. This same man that was strong and adamant and, and not afraid and, and had righteous indignation. The same man that was bold, the one that walked in authority, the one that stood by himself in front of 450 false prophets, didn't have a, a spirit of fear in him at all. Is the same man that's now running from Jezebel. Because a spirit of discouragement has attached itself to him. And now he is in a cave and he is hiding and he is in fear for his life. And the father has to come and remind him. You come out of that cave. I am with you. Just like I was with you in Mount Carmel. Just like I gave you victory there. Just like I gave you the strength to stand in front of Ahab and declare what thus saith the Lord. Just like at your word, fire fell from heaven. I am going to fight for you now. So you don't allow the spirit of discouragement to cause you to shut up, to cause you to lay down, to cause you to back up and to cause you to quit. When the spirit of discouragement tries to grip you, that's when you become more desperate for me. That's when you press into my presence even harder. That's when you go and you put your face in my word even more. That's when you circle yourself around the right voices. That can tell you, nope, pull it together. Nope, 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 nope. You can't wallow in that. You can't stay in that. You can't keep reading that. You can't keep rehearsing that. So how do we overcome discouragement? How do we gain victory over the spirit of discouragement? Get your Bibles and go to Nehemiah real quick. And we're going to pray before we get off tonight. Who is this helping? 
I feel my strength tonight. I feel, I feel my strength coming on tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. We're going to pray tonight. We're going to pray tonight. We're going to pray tonight. That's something that I can never stop doing. Every cyber church, we're going to pray and we're going to pray through. I'm going to give you the word and we're going to pray it out. Hallelujah. Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. I just told you guys, after a great victory, the enemy is going to come. While you're in the process of doing good, watch for the enemy. Do you all hear me? After you get a, give a great testimony, beware of the enemy. He is coming. But just because he comes, he doesn't dictate to us how we respond. We may become discouraged, but our faith will not be shaken. Do you all hear me? Because that's what he's after. He is after our faith in God. If he can break our faith, he can disconnect us from our father. Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. And let me just give you guys, uh, this is a summary of what's going on here. So God gives Nehemiah a, a, a heavy mandate. And if you haven't shared this, go ahead and share it. It'll also be back on tonight at 10 p.m. For those who, you know, you want to hear it again or you're in a different time zone and you want to send it to those on your time zone for them to catch it. It comes back on at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So Nehemiah is given instruction from the father to do something major, to do something that has never been done before. I'm talking to those of you who are reformers on this line tonight. I'm talking to those of you that have been given an assignment to do something that has never been done before. Ekotai, I am ministering to those of you that understand that what you've been called to do is bigger than you. I want you to, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, speak in encouragement to you as I encourage myself. He was giving a major mandate. He was given a major assignment. And it was not going to come without opposition. Are you all hearing me? When you are called to do something big. When you are called to make a major impact. When you have been given influence. When you've been given a voice, when you have been the one chosen to be the liberator, when you have been the one chosen to be the curse breaker, when you have been the one to be the one that brings revival and reformation is not going to come without a fight. It's not going to come without opposition. The father says to Nehemiah, I need you to rebuild walls that have been ruined. I am investing a great work in your hands for these walls have been brought to nothing. These walls have been brought to just rubble and I am commissioning you to rally <coughs> up troops and rebuild what was torn down. I'm ministering tonight to rebuilders. I am ministering tonight to reformers. Yeah, I am ministering tonight to those who are disruptors. I am ministering tonight to those who have been called to go against the grain. I am ministering tonight to those of you that have been called to be confronters. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you because that's who the enemy wants to discourage. Because if he gets you, guess what? He gets all those people that are assigned to your assignment. 
So if I can discourage her and get her to go back into the cave and close her mouth and feel like I'm not with her, then guess what? She will not do what I've called her to do. And those that she's assigned to minister to will never get the ministry because now she has closed her mouth. Those that I've assigned him to, to liberate and to teach and to instruct and to employ and to raise up. He'll never do it, which now in turn is, is a, is a, is a, uh, 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 what is it? An effect, not just on him, but it just trickles down. I get him and I get those that he has influence with. That's why I said it's bigger than you. It's about those who you're assigned to, too. I discourage you that I can get a loophole with your children. I get you off your block that I can affect everybody that's around you. That's a ripple effect, domino effect. So he gives Nehemiah this major assignment. You're going to rebuild the wall. You're going to, you're going to resurrect what was torn down. And you're going to build it for my glory. And the Bible says in Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, when you look at verse one, it says, but it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was angry. Sanballat was what? The enemy on the sideline. The enemy on the sideline that did not mind the walls being broken down. The enemy on the sideline that loved the state that this place was in. It didn't bother him. Now you want to come and bring change. Now you want to come and shift culture. Now you want to come and, and bring glory to God. We don't want you here. We don't want your voice here. We don't want your presence here. Who am I talking to? We don't want your ideas here. We don't want you to get this promotion. We don't want you to work here. And when Sam Ballot heard, because that's all the enemy got to do is hear it, is hear what's going on. Oh God, oh God, people's lives are being changed. Oh God, oh God, those that, that, that won't save, they, 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 they're saved now. Oh God, oh God, those that were giving their lives over to the enemy have now surrendered their will to the will of Christ. Oh God, they, they have come to the job and they're causing things to change for God's glory. Oh God, the family now is being one to the Lord because of their life. All the enemy got to do is hear what you're doing. When Sam Ballot heard... That we are building the wall. He was angry. And he did what? He took great indignation. And he began to mock the Jews. The way the enemy tries to discourage us is by using mockery. The way the enemy tries to get into our spirit. To, 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 to knock us off our block. To cause our faith to be decreased is to begin to make mockery and to begin to speak lies into our ear and to make us feel that what God has given us to do is not going to happen. Do y'all see it? So he begins to have in the nation. He's mad. He's mad. And now he begins to mock the Jews. And now it's not just Sam Ballot, but the Bible says in verse three, I'm just giving you all, just go with me. Well, wait, wait, let me let y'all see this. Look at verse two. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria. And he said, so now he's gathering up troops. Cause y'all know the enemy, he's a punk. So he can't never come by himself. He always got to go and get reinforcement. He, he, he always got to go get other people to join the bandwagon. He always needs some co-signers. Because the more in number, 
is supposed to be intimidating. So you begin to feel that is you against a lot. You begin to feel that you're out here and you're getting ready to be outnumbered because of how it looks. Because of how it looks. Oh my God, the whole world is against me. Oh my God, everybody is saying something. Oh my God, I don't have no support. Oh my God, I'm out here by myself. I'm so alone. And is everybody else is just against me. That's the trick of the enemy. To make you feel that is more of them and you're by yourself. So he goes to his army. And he begins to talk stuff. Look look at these Jews. They're, they're so feeble. Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in the day? Will they revive the stones out of heaps of this rubbish which are burned? Oh, he is just laughing like, what are these little feeble Jews going to do? Do they really think that they're going to be able to resurrect something from this rubbish, from, 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 from this dirt? They're weak. They're frail. That's the enemy. That's the enemy. What you think you're going to do? You, you don't qualify. You, you don't even got the, the wits. You don't even have the knowledge for this position. What you going to do? You got a terrible past. Who going to listen to you? Look, look, look at you. You ain't even strong. Look, look at what's going on in your, in your house. Look what's going on with your children. You don't qualify to help nobody. That's the job of the enemy to taunt us and to mock us so that we will retreat. He says all of this stuff. And now verse three, now Tobiah was by him. And now Tobiah jumps in. And he says, even that which they build, if a fox go up, it will even break. So now you got another person laughing. Whatever y'all build, it ain't, it ain't even strong to even stand. If a fox run up the wall, the whole building gonna fall down. And guess what? As they're talking, as they're making mockery, as they are laughing and lying, the Bible says that Nehemiah said, God, we are despised. God, I need you to turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And God, do not cover their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. God, they're not messing with us. They're messing with you. I receive the seed. Big sis, I love you. We're just doing what you gave us to do, God. So as they're talking and mocking and laughing at the assignment, God, you deal with them. So number one, how do we deal with discouragement? How do we overcome when discouragement tries to grip us? We go to God. We go to God. Do you all hear me? The discouraged, we become even more desperate. We do not respond to the Sanballats and to the Tobias. We don't even incline our ear to the lies of the enemy. We go to God. And then the Bible says in verse six, so we built the wall and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof for the people had a mind to work. What happens when the spirit of discouragement tries to come and grip you? You do not go on the sideline and quit. What do you do? You stay in the game. You keep building. You keep loving. You keep serving. You keep on uh, uh, giving. You keep on writing. 
You keep empowering. You keep equipping. You keep on forgiving. You got to stay in the game. Even if you if, if, if you got to, my, my baby is in, in championship right now. My baby boy. And they just came from Pennsylvania and he ended up uh uh hurting his uh 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 whatever that bone is right there at, at the at the butt. It it hurts bad. And it, it make you feel like you don't even want to walk. It's that it's that it's that butt bone. And the coach is saying to him, you gotta keep it moving, you gotta keep you gotta keep stretching it. You gotta you gotta keep it active. I know it hurts. Tailbone. Oh, I said butt. Y'all know what I was trying to say, right? Thank you, Shasha. He he damaged his tailbone. And the coach is saying, I know it's hurting him, but but he's gonna have to keep stretching that tailbone. And he's gonna have to keep running. Because guess what? If he stops, it's going to get stiff. The more he keeps it from moving and the more it's not, it's not in motion. The more it's not mobile is the stiffer it's going to get. And when he tries to go back and play, it's going to be even harder for him to play the game because he's going to be in pain. I'm going to keep him in the game because the more he runs and the more he's active, is the better he's going to feel. Oh, y'all ain't say nothing to me right there. I just got that. So I don't need him on the sideline. I don't need him to take a break. I need him to stretch. And I need him to do what? Stay in the game. So we're going to go to the father. We're going to seek the father for vindication. Because it's not for us to vindicate. It's not for us to, to go back and forth with the enemy. We fight differently. We fight in the spirit. We fight in prayer. We fight in worship. This is how we fight discouragement. Oh, I'm talking. So the Bible says that they built the wall. And they joined together because what everybody had the right mind when you are battling discouragement when the spirit of discouragement tries to come and grip you you need to have the right people in your circle you need to have the right voices speaking to you you need to have the right people on your team you need to make sure the people around you are creating the right atmosphere and not allowing you to wallow in your pity. I'm teaching good. It says they all had a what? They had a mind to work. So they heard the discouragement too. Nehemiah is the target because he's the captain of the team. But even though he's the captain, guess what? They had to have the same mindset. Because if they got discouraged, if they began to, to retaliate, it still would affect the assignment. So you can't have people. Yeah, you know what? It is true. Yeah, it, you should. You should just take a break. Yeah, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you should listen. Maybe what they said was true. Job was going through the worst storm in his life. And his friends, these are the ones that he trusted. The Bible said they didn't say his associates. The Bible didn't even say these were Job's enemies. The Bible said it was his friends. I received the seed. God bless y'all. Thank you. The Bible says his friends said to him, well, you know what? Maybe you did something wrong. Uh, maybe you need to think back of something in your past. You know, are you sure? You sure you ain't seeing? 
These his friends, y'all. His friends didn't even say to him, you know what, Joe? We know your life. We, we're with you. We see your sacrifice. We know how, 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 how you bless your family, how you live the life of integrity. And this is just God getting you ready for greater. This is just God positioning you for double. Instead, they begin to uh, uh, co-sign with the enemy. They begin to say to him, uh, you know, something ain't right here. You got all this bad happening. Everything happened to you back to back. It got to be something wrong. It got to be something you did. What, what you ain't tell us, Job? And Job had to go through that storm by himself. And he had to go through the process of discouragement by himself because his friends did not have the right things to say to him. These people here in Nehemiah, the Bible says that they had the mind to work. So what was it? Number one was what? You got to go to God. That's the first thing. When it hits you, you go to God. You become desperate for the father even more. And then you got to do what? You got to keep going. You got to stay in the game. You have to stay in the game. And then you got to make sure, number three, you got the right people around you and in your ear and in your environment and, and speaking the right things in your atmosphere. To make sure that you don't get off, off track. To make sure that you don't get distracted. Because if you get off, it's going to affect us. Your team shouldn't be the ones distracting you. Your circle shouldn't be the ones causing discouragement. Or allowing the enemy to use them to discourage you. Everybody needs to be of the same mind. And that is... To build, to build, builders, resurrectors, reformers. That is the anointing that God has placed on your life. To take something that's nothing and to speak life to it. And guess what? It resurrects. That's what's on many of you. And that's why the enemy wants to grip you with discouragement. Shake it off. Shake it off. I don't care if you got to cry while you in the game. You got to keep playing. Grab your, the back of your leg. Okay, I got, a, I got a shin splint. Run it out. I remember running track and baby, I would get those shin splints and it make you almost fall to the ground. And the only way you can get rid of the, the, the split is to keep moving it, to keep running. As bad as it hurt, I had to keep going. As, as sad as I was today, moments are good Then like playing back, playing back stuff the enemy's saying, playing back just, you know, how the enemy is trying to work back to back. And, and, and I still had to get on here tonight and do cyber church. You have an assignment, Siobhan. There are people that need to hear the word of the Lord. Are you going to cancel? Are you going to cancel because you're discouraged? Are you going to wallow in this little, in this little thing here? And not fulfill the assignment that I've given to you? Or are you going to keep going? And as you are encouraging them, I'm going to encourage you. Stay in the game. Get around people that got you covered. God got people praying for you that you don't even know. I, I, this young lady sent me a message today and, 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 and said, I went to God for you. I asked the father, what is it about you? There's something special. What is it? 
She said, and the father commissioned me to pray these several things. And I pray for you. I pray that God cover you. I pray that God will uh, cover your heart. I pray that God will send the right people into your life. He will have people to pray for you. You keep going. You keep going. And then the Bible says that they, the people had a mind to work. And as they're working, here comes the enemy again in verse 7. And the enemy is still doing what he's doing, trying to discourage them. And verse 8 says, and they conspired together to come out and fight against Jerusalem. And they conspired to hinder the assignment. Do you all see anywhere where the enemy stopped? He's not going to. The, God, the job of the enemy is to stop us. To steal. To kill. To destroy. So he is not going to stop. Therefore, you cannot stop. Verse 8 says, they conspired. So now all the enemies have come together. And they are coming up with a scheme, a plan to hinder the work of God from going forth. Nevertheless, verse nine, we made our prayer. Thank you for the seed. We made our prayer unto God and we set a watch against them day and night because of them. The last one. You cannot be ignorant concerning the enemy's tactics. Know the enemy's tactics. Because we know the enemy is coming, we can never get off of our assignment. We can't ever become lax and comfortable. So we got to be at attention and we have to stay at watch day and night. Do you all hear the word from tonight? You don't have any time to sit back and chill. Not for those of you that have a major assignment. Not for those of you that have been called to be a game changer. Not for those of you that's been called to be uh, one that will bring a uh, freedom and liberty to those who are captive. Not for those of you who are the first of your kind. You cannot sleep none spiritually. You have to set a watch day and night because we are not ignorant concerning the enemy's tactics. Y'all hear me? This is how we overcome discouragement. This is how we get the victory over the spirit of discouragement. We pray. We keep going. We get around the right people. And we make sure we got the right strategy. Because we know the enemy is always on the job. So we stay alert and attentive day and night. And when you go on to read Nehemiah, the Bible lets us know that they built the wall. And the father received the glory. And every time discouragement came, every time opposition came, not Nehemiah kept building. And there's a passage in Nehemiah that says that it got so that the, the enemy intensified his attack. The enemy came even harder. So now as they're building, they couldn't just build, but they had to fight and build at the same time. This is not a physical fight, but you got to know how to fight. I just talked about you, baby. 
Grace Lady J. I just talked about you praying for me. I love you. You got to know how to fight spiritually and keep going at the same time. So you don't take a break to fight. Who am I talking to? You don't go, well, you know what? I'm going to take this time and I'm going to go and I'm going to go pray and I'm going to go, oh, no, 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 no. You fight and you go. You fight and you build. You fight and you write. You fight and you encourage. You fight and you preach. You, you fight and you, and, you, and you launch. At the same time. You fight and you pray for others. You fight and you encourage others. At the same time. You press through and you keep going to work. You press through and you keep being who you're called to be. Keep taking care of your family. Keep being a mommy to your kids. Keep being a wife. Keep being a leader. Keep being a servant. Whatever you do, you cannot stop. Fight and build at the same time. That's your last one. How do we overcome discouragement? How do we shake it off? How do we let the enemy know that he don't have us? We fight and we build at the same time. The more I fight, the stronger I'll be. The more I war in prayer, the stronger I'll become. That's how we fight. The more I worship is the stronger I'll be. The more fortified I'll be. So when the enemy comes and tries to hit me, guess what? It doesn't penetrate because I have built up spiritual walls through my worship, through my prayer, through my study in the word, through my consistency that when the enemy comes, it can't get in my spirit. Did this help anybody tonight? So you wipe your eyes. You, you have your little moments, but you don't stop. You feel discouraged, but you better get back on cyber church tonight and do what you got to do. You better get on there and still encourage and still give a word to bless people's lives. Even when you feel like crap. It took me a minute to log on. Cause I had to get myself together. God, I don't, I don't even have nothing to say. Cause I just don't feel, I just, I, 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 I'm, I'm in a little thing right now. And he said to me, the discouraged got to become desperate. You better get in my face, get back in my presence. Cause that's where your strength going to come from. Press through, keep going. Keep fighting, keep warring, keep praying, get into your word, shake it off. You already know how the enemy is coming. You knew he was coming. So why are you acting like you didn't know he was coming? You should have already been prepared. So at this point, expect him to do anything. And regardless of what he comes with, you keep going. Y'all ready to pray? Let's pray. I pray that this blessed y'all. It blessed me. I feel better. I feel better. And the same intensity and the same dedication I had on consecration is the same dedication and the same intensity that I will have for the rest of my days. Because the more victory God gives me is the harder the enemy is going to come after me. The more victory God gives you is the harder the enemy is going to come after you. So guess what? You got to go harder for God. And don't you let up none. They set a watch for the enemy day and night. They didn't sleep on the devil because they knew the enemy's tactics and how he was coming. Father, we love you.
We thank you for this word tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, get into your prayer posture. We're going to pray. And then I'll see those of you that are in the Wednesday group. I will see you all at 7 p.m. If you are not in the group, log in because this word is good. And we're teaching as God gives us to teach. And then don't forget to go and secure your virtual seat for the book launch. I can't wait to see you guys. I love you. God, we love you. We bless you. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word tonight, Father. God, we, uh, we're we so in awe of your, 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 your might and, and your splendor and how you orchestrate and order our steps because you had not just your people in mind, but you had me in mind. I thank you. I thank you, Father, for lifting the spirit of discouragement. Yendo Kotai. Ho! Off of me. And for those that have felt oppressed. And for those that have felt discouraged. And for those who have felt lonely. And for those who have felt sad and have been in a stupor. For those that have felt uh, uh, abandoned, for those that feel like they have no strength, I thank you, Father, that that spirit of heaviness is being lifted off of your children now. I bless you, Father, because you said that for the spirit of heaviness, for the spirit of discouragement, for the spirit of despair, depression, sadness, weightiness, to put on the garment of praise and so, Father, we put on praise tonight. Yes, Father, we put on joy tonight. We thank you, God, that your word has brought us joy. Your word has liberated us. Glory to God. We thank you for life that comes from your word. And we will praise you forever. We will play, praise you forever, God. For you are great. For you are mighty. Hallelujah. For you are just. For you are one that rescues us. You deliver us. You bring us up and out. And you bring us through. And we thank you, Father. We bless you tonight for showing us how to maneuver during seasons of discouragement. During moments of discouragement. During times when that spirit wants to grip us and paralyze us. Thank you, Father, for giving us the antidote. Thank you, Father, for giving us, God, the answer, the resolution. Thank you, Father, for giving us the steps on how to overcome the spirit of discouragement. We thank you tonight, God. That you have given us strength to stay in the game. We thank you, Father, that we have been motivated and encouraged to keep going, to keep building, to keep loving, to keep serving, to keep doing, to keep, oh God, to keep, oh God, to keep God, to keep working. We've been encouraged to keep encouraging, to keep forgiving. We've been encouraged to keep inspiring, to keep challenging, to keep preaching, to keep teaching, to keep mentoring. Yes, we've been encouraged to keep mothering, to keep being the friend, to keep being the wife, to keep being the husband. To keep being the motivator. To keep being the leader. We've been encouraged to keep going. God, I thank you. That you are giving them strength to endure. I thank you. That you are giving them power. To overcome every storm, every trial. And I bless you, God. That just like Nehemiah was able to come to you. And to pray for vindication and to pray that you deal with his enemies. 
as he fulfills your assignment. I thank you, Father, that we, your children, can come to you. Knowing that when we come to you, you will answer us. Knowing that when we come to you, you will fight for us. Knowing that when we come to you, you will protect us. Knowing that when we come to you, you will deal with our adversary. You will shut the mouth of the lion. Hey, you will prove the doubter wrong. I thank you, Father, for doing it for your children. And I thank you, Father, that these on this line will not stop until the assignment is finished. I thank you, Father, that those around them have a mind like theirs, that they're all going to keep working. They're all going to keep loving. They're all going to keep serving. They're all going to pre press into your presence even more. Glory to God. I thank you, God, that they have the same mind, that they are unified, that they are all on one accord, that there's no division in the camp, that there's no discord. That there is no, 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 no leak. That there is no breach. Hi, I thank you, Father. That you are fortifying their circle. That you are securing their circle. I bless you for it. And I give you glory, God. We will not break. We will not stop. We will not back up. We will not give in. We just become more desperate. And the more desperate we become, the more the Father pours into us what we need to build, to resurrect, to reestablish, to do what's bigger than us. I pray that you've been encouraged tonight. I pray that you have felt the igniting from the Spirit to go and to not look back. I love you. I bless you all in the name of the Lord. Thank you guys for those that have sown into my life tonight. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. I declare same grace, favor, unexpected opportunities, open doors, no lack, no struggle. Hotai, I thank you, Father. I thank you for releasing it to these. They have released seed. And we give you glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Derek, I see you on. I love you. Derek Hill, blessings to you. All right, family. I'll see you Wednesday. For those of you who are part of our private group, 7 o'clock. And for those of you who are not, I'll see you guys back next Monday. And then I'll see you on the 17th at the book launch. Don't forget to go register. Blessings. Have a good night.